All right, so let's add all the animal features together in this cat tutorial. So let's go ahead and get started. Of course, I love starting out with the eyes. So the first eye is already complete, so you can see how that works. And then to the left eye, or um, not the left eye, the right eye here, you wanna start out with the outline, incorporate the pupil, avoid the highlights as much as possible and then start to add in all those colors into the eye, making sure you're leaving those little specks that you can see, the little details in the eye itself where the color is. And then once you have that, you can start to draw outside of the eye. So I usually like to start from the eye out, or sometimes I'll start from the ear after I've done the eyes. So this detail here, you wanna get that pattern down as much as possible for this uh, little tabby cat here because the pattern is what's really important when it comes to certain animals that have pattern and really unique texture. And if you haven't noticed, I started out with the first layer of some sort of creamy skin color at the um, for, for the first layer and then started to build up layers using different colors and trying to get that texture in at the same time it is all about building those layers so be aware of that as you are working your way up and using light pressure at the same time what's really fun about drawing this tabby cat is all the different colors that i get to incorporate in this portrait there are so many different colors between browns orange even light pale creamy colors and uh, like the light ivory kind of color and then even some pinks and peach colors especially in the ears there's a lot of rich colors that are happening here and it's really important to make sure that you're drawing the ear as detailed as possible so when you're doing that you want to leave room for the little highlights of the ear itself by drawing it darker coming from the outside in and letting it lighten up as you're drawing inwards and once it's all complete you can use an electric eraser to erase some of it to create this highlighted um, effect for some of the uh, little white hairs that are coming through that is a really fun uh, little tool that you can use for that method now we can move on to the forehead here I like to draw left to right because I'm right-handed. It avoids the smudging of the um, white of the paper. So that's what I like to do as much as possible. And then look at this texture here. It's absolutely gorgeous. Want to use lighter pressure at first and then start to build up with heavier pressure as um, you're getting those layers in and making sure that the detail is happening a little bit after you've gotten those first couple of layers in because you do want to get more of the color the blending of the color first before you add the details and now you can see the first layer on the ear as well as i'm transitioning from the forehead up to the right ear here and as you can see i'm like building different colors trying to get in some of the orange in there making those adjustments before i move on to the right ear and if you haven't noticed yet i actually use this beautiful almost like a sage green color which really ties in between the the brown and the orange tones in there so just play around with your colors and see what you can come up with it's absolutely fun to get to play around with the color set that you have that you just might not think that you would really use that color but it is so much fun and see like that first that second layer is that green color and you wouldn't really think that it's a green color when um, you apply it but as you look at the pencil it does look a little bit of like an earthy green so if you apply that it's going to really make your portrait pop even more the more variety of colors you use that are similar to one another, such as different values of um, blues or browns, things like that, the more your portrait's gonna look even more realistic. 
You also want to make sure that you're burnishing some of these areas. And what I mean by burnish is creating this waxy coating over the top of some of these layers to blend what you have. And you can use a lighter pencil for something like this. Make sure that you're not um, using too much heavy pressure because you don't want to damage the paper, but it really does help to blend those pieces together. The nose doesn't have a lot of detail, so you don't really have to worry about adding too much detail. Most cats, I would say, don't have a lot of detail in, in the nose. Most of them are pretty pink too, so you can use a variety of pinks for that and just make sure that the little nostril areas are not necessarily 100% even because no two nostrils are 100% even. Really, both sides are never going to be even, whether it's the eyes, the nose, the ears, nothing. So if you're trying to make it look more even, then you're going to be stressing yourself out and it's not going to look realistic. Just draw what you see and that's going to help you the most. And then drawing the mouth here is very interesting. Just watch and see how I build up these layers. I'm also adding the little dots that start out the whiskers there. And how I got the whiskers, I used an embossing tool to create an indention in the paper before I actually drew, um, drew anything on there. So that's how you get those little white, white bits is because it's an, an indention essentially. And then the nose, or I'm sorry, the mouth is actually like an upside down Y shape. And you really just wanna leave it. Um, I don't wanna add too much texture or detail to it because some cats have more white around the face. Um, it really just depends on the cat. But for this one, I didn't have to add too much detail because it was mostly white. So that made it pretty simple. Now we're moving on to the rest of the body, which is really just mostly the neck, a little bit of the shoulders too. And this detail is very interesting. It has kind of this um, interesting tabby cat striped shape and texture so when i'm adding this i went ahead and just darkened the darker parts and left the lighter parts alone until last that's super important is leaving those highlighted areas alone until one of your last steps that way you know you're not going to be making a mistake by accidentally drawing too dark in those lighter areas and then I filled it in with some orange, um, a little bit more of an orangey brown color, which is perfect for, um, for this cat because that's literally what this body looks like. So we are almost done here. Just really doing more of the finishing touches, making sure everything looks good, kind of darkening up some of the um, areas that are more white and using lighter colors to blend in and smoothing out the um those parts that are connect to one another such as the chin to the neck and the mouth to the chin everything like that want to make sure that you are um making sure everything is connected as much as possible when you're done and the neck here i definitely know at this point it's not 100 percent done you can see there's still a lot of white the tooth of the paper showing through so I am darkening up everything, making sure that it's all getting burnished and well blended together by using a mix between darker and lighter colors because you can burnish with darker ones, but I only suggest that um, in the darker areas because it'll darken it up too much if you use it in the highlighted areas. So I hope that this video was really helpful and there is actually a little trick at the very end here that I like to use. It's a different tool and you'll see how that works in here in just a second. So this slice tool you can get on Amazon. I have it linked below in the description and it's so much fun. You can add a lot of detail with it and it just basically etches away some of those layers so it looks lighter when you do that. And it really just, it's really nice to add that detail in there. Those little bits of white 
hairs. Sometimes there'll be stray hairs. Thank you so much for watching. Please, please, please like and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Learn to draw miniature color pencil portraits. The best part about drawing these miniature portraits is I can get them done in a very reasonable time without being so intimidated of drawing so large. My students have absolutely loved getting to draw these little portraits because they feel like they can actually get something accomplished within a reasonable amount of time. Each one takes no more than about two to three hours, so you will have an awesome portrait by the end of the day. These are beginner friendly and great for ages 12 and up. At the bottom of the video, I give you what pencil I use so that you're never confused and I will tell you every step that needs to be taken. So if you are just wanting to have fun one day and just play around, then you can sign up for the Patreon membership that is only $11 a month and you can cancel at any time. Learn to draw your own pet. This is an eight week program where you get to learn to draw all sorts of different animal fur, such as different types of curly fur, striped fur, different colored fur as well, such as brown or black, and different animal features, as well as towards the end, you'll get to follow along a full pet portrait tutorial so that the very end, you will get to draw your own pet with confidence. Sign up today to be put on the waitlist.